and uh, it's clear as day uh, severe weather is a very big part of life in North Texas. In tonight's WFA original get ready for some intensity with meteorologist Jesse Hawila. He's taking us on a road trip to meet the ultimate storm chasers. <laughs> We left this morning at 8 o'clock. We're now in Norman, Oklahoma. When you think of where the most research and where severe weather central is in the entire world, literally the world, it's the here. The world? The world. In Norman, you'll find the National Severe Storms Laboratory, the Storm Prediction Center, Radar Operations Center. Oh, and Dorothy. You understand this is like Chuck E. Cheese for me? Hold on, let me get, let me collect myself. I'm so excited. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Our first stop of the day led us to this big blue dome where we met with the deputy director of the National Severe Storms Laboratory. A little breezy. Yes, it is. How's it going, man? I'm Jesse. Pretty good. Kurt Handel. Inside that dome, Kurt showed us around the advanced technology demonstrator. That's the newest, most advanced weather radar there is. Radar is a primary tool for issuing warnings, and the better the tools that the forecasters have, the better they can uh, use to issue those warnings. Let's go back to that term, phased array. It's the main difference between the radars we have today and the radars of the future. Instead of having one transmitter, in this case, we've got 4,864 transmitters. Phased array radar scans the sky electronically instead of mechanically. This allows the radar beam to focus in on particular areas of interest, like a severe storm or a tornado, in order to provide more frequent radar updates. We want to uh, lengthen the lead time of the warning and reduce false alarms. According to a 2011 study published by the American Meteorological Society, the average false alarm rate for tornado warnings is about 75%. That means only one out of every four tornado warned storms actually produce a tornado. The National Weather Service says the current average lead time for a tornado is only 13 minutes. That's how long you have to seek shelter after a warning is issued before a tornado hits. Now these stats may seem a bit alarming, but we've come a long way in a short amount of time. It's insane how much it's changed. When we started out, we had the paper maps coming off the facsimile machine twice a day, and you'd kind of point to a state and say, we think there might be tornadoes there. That was the best we could do. Those are the instrument racks that go on top of our vehicles. This is Eric Rasmussen. He's a senior research meteorologist at NOAA who's been chasing and studying tornadoes in the field for 45 years. We had the 16 millimeter movie cameras that we'd film tornadoes with, then take the film back to the laboratory and track little pieces of debris frame by frame by frame. Eric now leads one of the most detailed severe storm research projects ever called Taurus. It involves drones, a hurricane hunter aircraft, three mobile radar systems, balloon-borne sensor launchers, and eight mesonet trucks equipped with data collection instruments. The furthest forward instruments measure pressure, the atmospheric pressure. Then the stuff in the funny white tube, those are temperature and humidity sensors in there. The goal of Taurus is to gather data of small-scale structures in and around supercells. They want to know what's going on in these massive storms before, during, and after there's a tornado. For the first time, we're going to release a swarm of sounding balloons with their weather instruments just to the north or just ahead of the developing rotation. Try to send them all in at once. And so we'll just get kind of a rake of observations of temperature and humidity in the low-level air that's flowing in toward the developing tornado. These observations taken directly from the storm will help forecasters understand what makes some storms drop tornadoes and others not. The innovative stuff in Taurus is that we'll be flying UAV aircraft along the edge of the precipitation ahead of the developing rotation and just to the rear of the developing rotation to try to pick up on those temperature contrasts. And that's never really been done successfully. Who chases in this? <laughs> yeah. The last director of this laboratory actually did chase on a motorcycle when he was in college. A motorcycle? Yeah, in hail. <laughs> not smart. Maybe he had a helmet. <laughs> right, he had a helmet. Uh, moped, yeah. maybe less smart. That's, even that's not the best chase mobile right there. The level of detail and research and data that are trying to be collected is much more extensive than I expected. And it helps you back at the station oh, yeah. when we have warnings, oh, yeah. help save lives yeah. at the same time. We're all a team. Storm Prediction Center, National Weather Service, the National Severe Storms Laboratory, the broadcasters, it's all one common goal, and that is to protect property and lives. All right, Pete, and our crews are